I am nervous about. <sighs> Hi, Percy. Welcome. So, I've decided in honor of the holiday season, I want to read Love Light Farms. If you have been online in the past month or so, if you have come across any winter rec lists, holiday rec lists, festive, festive cozy reads, anything like that, you have seen this cover. It's been everywhere. And so, I thought I'd give it a try. So, originally, my idea was I was gonna hook up a mic, I was we're gonna set up in the kitchen, we're gonna make sugar cookies, and it was gonna be a cute, cozy, baking video while we just talked about this book. But then I realized that it's the holiday season, which means family's around, and I didn't really want to be caught talking about dry humping by my parents or by my in-laws. So that idea very quickly went in the trash. And now I'm just stuck with cookie cutters that I don't know what to do with. Anyway, but I still wanted to make this video. I thought it could be fun. I wanted to upload it on Christmas. Because the holidays can be stressful and sometimes you need something to listen to while you decompress either stepping away from family, you know, going off to your room and taking some you time. Or maybe you need something to listen to while you're getting ready to go see family. Or maybe you're just alone and just want to keep the, the festive vibes going. So, that's what I'm here for. Let's hang out. Um, and I am having a bit of like a pain flare up, so if you see any weird cuts, no you didn't. No you didn't, you didn't see anything. I didn't lay on the ground. And so like always, I'm gonna start with a spoiler free review in case you realize, man, this sounds like my jam and I wanna read it completely blind. I get it, no worries. Love Light Farms by BK Borison. The only thing I knew about this book before I picked it up the only thing I knew about this book was that it was a romantic comedy that took place on a Christmas tree farm. And that's all I was hooked. That's all I needed to know. It was in my cart and I was clicking by. I love this shit. That, that is my bread and butter, my dude. Unironically, one of my favorite holiday movies is A Castle for Christmas on Netflix. Not because it's good, but because it's fun. <laughs> And it's silly, and it's a little silly rom-com, and the vibes are great. This is the shit I live for. Live for. So I was so excited. I was saving this for Christmas because I thought the shit was gonna hit. I was so excited. This is the stuff I live for, and this book falls right into that category. It scratches that little hallmark rom-com itch that I get this time of year. It, it did. Is it the best hallmark rom-com? I've ever read or watched now but it did it got the job done you know it got the job done and that's all I can ask for and I wanted it to live up to the hype so badly <laughs> so badly in lieu of sugar cookies I do have um, a sugar cookie latte from some undisclosed um, coffee shop and I did wear green for the occasion. So in that aspect, it gave me everything I wanted. It scratched that itch, it had a happy ending, and it was on a Christmas tree farm. But <laughs> it didn't resonate with me the way that it has with other people. Like, this is the top of the list for a lot of people, and I, I would disagree, but not strongly. You know what I mean? And I don't think the door. Are you back? Yeah. I'm recording. Oh. I, I don't know where I left off. I'm also being fairly quiet because I am in my in-law's house and I don't want, like I already stated I don't want them to hear me, but I also don't want to like disturb them. But the book just didn't resonate with me. Um. The setting is really cute. The town of Inglewood is really cute. The characters, I loved all of the characters, like individually. I loved all of them. I thought that they were written very well, had a lot of personality, and they just were fun to read. I liked seeing things happen to them. That sounds psychotic. I think the only thing that really didn't resonate with me, there are two major things. One, the romance, which is like the main point of the book. 
it took me about halfway through the book to like really get on board with it which for a rom-com shouldn't be the case you should be rooting for them from the beginning and then the ending was a little rushed which i wouldn't have even mentioned i wouldn't have paid attention to it really if i was a bigger fan of the romance throughout the rest of the book you know what i mean that's the most spoiler free i can really get with this so that's where we're gonna leave it um i would rate it three christmas trees out of five but like they're fluffy christmas trees you know they got character like it's good it's not great but it's good and if it's on your list i think it scratches that itch that like sappy holiday hallmark itch i recommend it good enough now time for spoilers the book starts off with a quote christmas eve will find me where the love light gleams I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams, which is lovely, and I didn't know those were the words. Love light gleams? Hello, that's gorgeous. But that's the quote where Love Light Farms gets its name, which I think is incredibly appropriate. The naming in this book I am all about. I think it's, it's done really well. I'm a huge fan. Love Light Farms, a Christmas tree farm owned by Stella blooms um hello the owner of a christmas tree farm being named estelle like star bloom i'm like less crazy about which is weird because you really like the last name bloom but mm, it's only okay but stella th the fact that her name is stella i think makes up for it in my mind so now Stella bought the farm about a year and a half ago and they're kind of on hard times. Not because Stella is bad at her job or because the farm is doing poorly. They're just kind of unlucky. There's a lot of growing pains that happen. They're just kind of down on their luck from the get-go. You know, Stella hasn't been able to pay herself in months, um, opting to dip into her savings to make sure that her workers get paid instead, which is very sweet and very like holiday spirit-y. It's not looking good for our girl and it makes you like her right away and so you feel bad for her when you learn that she's having supply chain issues local local kids are being vandals things getting unplugged things getting broken lots of damages that she's just having to deal with and you you feel bad for her you want to root for her from the get-go which i like and so an act of a desperation she enters an influencers contest to try to win a hundred thousand dollars to keep the farm afloat um, not only would it keep it afloat, but they would have a really soft cushion for at least the next year. So she enters the contest of world-renowned influencer, Evelyn St. James. She's a travel influencer with over a million followers on Instagram, and she loves highlighting. She loves to highlight small town stories. Now, Stella made a, might have lied a little on her application in an attempt to make her story seem more romantic. She might have said that she bought the farm with her partner in an effort to start settling down and living out their dreams which uh, i think stella's story is so much more romantic than just like a random boyfriend and our girl might have done a little too good of a job lying on her, on her application because now she's one of the finalists and evelyn st james is coming for a visit but uh-oh Stella doesn't have a boyfriend, so what is she going to do? Oh no, ever will she ask to be her fake boyfriend? And so now, see, this is where me knowing nothing about the plot really kicks me in the butt because the first person we're introduced is Beckett, who I love. Uh, he is the groundkeeper of the farms and he's the one that takes care of the trees. He loves fertilizer and I love him. He's a giant, stoic, beefcake of a man that's all I really want in life, you know? And I wanted him to be the love interest so badly. And way too late into the book was I like, no, 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 no. It's gonna be Beckett. He's gonna be love interest. Like, she talks about him in way too admiring of a manner, in my opinion. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. No, it's gonna circle back to Beckett, obviously it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't she asks him he says no and he says well why don't you ask luca we don't know who luca is and so what i thought was gonna happen is she asks luca they have a bit of a romp she starts to catch feelings he doesn't it gets kind of messy and and so she gets her feelings hurt and then in swoops 
Beckett to be like, no, you know, you deserve someone who treats you better than that. And I'm here and I've been here and I, I didn't want to pretend to be your boyfriend because I cared about you too much. That's not even close to what happens. <laughs> but a girl can dream. So who's Luca? Luca is Stella's best friend of 10 years. She met him after her mom died. You know, she was kind of floating through life. She literally ran into him and he has been her life preserver ever since. They have been platonic friends this entire time. They have never tried anything a little spicy and she can't imagine her life without him, which is why she kind of didn't want to ask him because she's been in love with him for 10 years so she likes him too much to pretend she won't be able to hold her feelings back and it, it, i was kind of close i guess but so wrong and she knows from the beginning that her pretending to be in a relationship with luca is gonna end poorly and it's gonna hurt like hell but she does it anyway and this is where my first issue with the novel comes up I think she likes him too much. Too much. I wish that she wasn't in love with him right off the bat. Maybe it was like a tiny baby crush. I don't let myself think that way. Um, I, I don't like him type energy. I could have been okay with it. But no, she loves him. In love with him from the get-go. And since we're only seeing this from her point of view, I think it would have been cuter if it was just a little crush because she does ask and he does say yes because of course he does it's his lala it's his best friend he's gonna do whatever she needs for anything but he's a little too like loosey-goosey about it he's too casual he agrees very nonchalantly and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever your best friend asks you to do something and you go yeah of course no big deal but we are only hearing from stella's point of view so we hear how much she loves him, how in love with him she is. And his response is very nonchalant and it makes me not like him. And part of that is because the character writing is so good. Because I love Stella. I love her. That's my new best friend. And my best friend deserves the world. So she's asking you to be her boyfriend, fake or not. You better fucking be shouting to this guy how lucky you are. That's my best friend. What do you mean, sure, Luca? Like, you're lucky she's looking in your direction. She's so, she's fantastic. I love her. And I think that's the problem. I like her so much that I want to defend her from this random guy that's very nonchalant. <laughs> Again, he's done nothing wrong, but still. And it sucks. Because the only reason why Stella is even doing this is because she wants the farm to sound more romantic. The idea of like settling down with the love of your life type romantic. I think Stella's story is much more romantic on its own. The whole reason she bought the farm in the first place was because she went to it as a kid with her mom. She grew up moving moving from town to town as her mom struggled to keep a roof over their head. Inglewood was the last place that they ended up, and one thing that they did every year was being able to go to the Christmas tree farm because it was free entry, and even though they couldn't afford a tree, they could still go and experience the Christmas magic. And so when it went up for sale, of course she bought it to save it. It means something to her. That is so sweet! <laughs> What the fuck do you mean? I want Ellen St. James to see all the things that made me fall in love with this farm the first winter I visited with my mom. When I was 16 years old and programmed to hate most things but fell in love with the wide open space that smelled like balsamic and orange slices and just a hint of cinnamon. I want her to get a hot chocolate from Lily's Bakehouse. Go ice skating in the rink Beckett organized last winter and watch the kids chase each other by the barn. I want her to see the magic. Page 26. And then again, page 38. It's probably not a coincidence that I bought this place in October. There's a special kind of magic on nights like this. A certain sort of nostalgia when the past intermingles with the present and flirts with the future. I can smell the wood smoke from the fire Beckett has going in his place on the base of the foothills. See the plume of smoke as it lifts from his chimney. The branches rustle above me and a few owls call out, a solemn sound as the sun dips lower. For a single, perfect moment. I feel like I'm in that picture my mom used to tape on the wall of whatever apartment we called home. A farm, 
a single red tractor, a little girl with dirt on her knees and a perfect collection of Christmas trees behind her. It's been a dream since before I had even the courage to make dreams. What the fuck you need a man for? There is something so compelling and romantic and sweet about her opening this Christmas tree farm by herself that there better be a damn good reason a man is put into the picture. And for the first half of the book, I don't think he needs to be there. <laughs> but then we wouldn't have the story, so. Hmm. Page 29. He leans closer, tongue pressing at the inside of his cheek. His brown eyes flash a shade darker and his voice drops. I agreed to be your fake boyfriend for a week. Suddenly, it sounds like he's not teasing me at all. All my bravado and good humor slips away with that little comment. A rush of heat pressing at my cheeks. It's a tight curl in my stomach that I hate, and I avert my gaze to the top of my desk. Is this what it's going to be like now? Luca holding on to this as a bartering trip for the rest of our relationship? A funny little anecdote at cookouts and parties. Oh, remember that time you were so desperate you asked me to pretend to date you? Stinky. And this is supposed to be him teasing, playing. And I think that quote really encapsulates how the first half of the book felt to me. Like this entire, like where that quote comes from, for context, um, he got a hazelnut latte from town. It's always made better for him because he's hot, apparently. And so she takes it and she's drinking it. Again, they're friends. This is cute. And, and they're teasing. Um, and he's bringing up like, oh, well, I did this for you. I did that for you. Like, can I have my latte back? Like a cute little pros and cons thing. Nothing out of the ordinary. And then that happens. And it makes me feel gross. And it makes her feel bad. And it makes me feel bad because that's my best friend. And to his point, he realizes that he said something wrong. And even though he doesn't super know what he said wrong he does lighten the mood he tries to make her laugh and he tries to make her feel better and then beckett ends up with the hazelnut latte somehow i don't know how and so i don't want to use this to say that luke is a bad guy he shouldn't be the romantic interest no i just think the framing needed to be worked a little bit <laughs> like i can't tell if this is meant to be like he's dipping his toes into being flirty being saucy i have to whisper because there are people outside and i don't want them to hear me say this I don't know if he's trying to have like a daddy moment, but it doesn't work for me, which doesn't help his case of me thinking he's not good enough for my best friend. And this is something that I almost completely glossed over because in the grand scheme of things, it's not that important. It's a really small moment. And the next scene is actually much more important, but I was collecting my notes and looking at, at um, my bookmarks and it stood out to me and I'm like, it rubbed me such the wrong way. I had to bring it up because I do, I think this encapsulates how I felt up until about chapter 12. <laughs> but the next scene, they're trying to get their story straight for, for when Evelyn St. James shows up. They want to make sure that they're on the same, that they're on the same page as to what their story is supposed to be. So we have like a little bit of walk down memory lane with our girl and we can start to see why she likes him. Cause he is sweet. He does treat her well. She thinks about him making her food. She thinks about him sneaking groceries into her house. She had a really shitty studio apartment and he came over and changed all the locks for her and installed two locks on the front door just in case and made sure all the windows locked. So like, fine. I guess he's fine. <laughs> and the way that he tells the story of the meeting was he ran to this beautiful girl who seemed sad and so he bought her grilled cheese. He has a weird thing about grilled cheese. We'll talk about it later, maybe. And she gets hung up on the fact that he called her beautiful and he's like yeah why wouldn't i call you beautiful what and it's supposed to be like his first hints of her of having feelings for her as well but it just kind of hurts my feelings <laughs> but it's just hints and she doesn't pick up on the hints so she's sitting there thinking about how friends don't think of friends that way which is not true i think my friends are beautiful um but maybe that's why he's never mentioned it before because friends don't say that to friends again not true and all the while she's sitting there thinking about his collarbones and how his eyes have gold flecks in them when he's in the sun because of course he does because what is a love interest unless they have gold flecks in their eyes i don't care what color their eyes are but they have gold flecks in them don't you worry and so all of this to say, okay, we need to get our fake story straight. We need to make sure that we get the rest of the town in on the joke. 
And instead of going around and telling the rest of the town, this small town of Inglewood apparently has a very, very tight-knit community. Everyone knows each other and everyone sees each other on a regular basis. But it, instead of having the whole town lie for them, which I, I can see that that might not be the most effective strategy here. I, I understand, but I still think it's better of what instead of what happens next. Because what they do do instead is they walk around town and just act like a couple. He throws his arm around her, he kisses her cheek, they're holding hands, and they don't say anything. But they seed enough out for rumors to start circulating. And I also did not like this. I know it sounds like I hate the book. I don't. I promise. I promise I don't hate the book. I promise. These are just the major plot points that I had problems with. But this scene almost made me DNF the book. Did I like this? I like this book. I do like this book. And so this was his idea. Walking around town, doing a little flirting, a little hand holding, a little snuggling, all the couple things was his idea. And this is news. It activates the town phone tree, which I didn't know were still a thing. I, I believe it. I believe they're still a thing everyone everyone is like invested and hyped beyond belief mr hewitt stares at them in disbelief from the sense of the library mabel from the local nursery literally screams someone cries and sheriff jones literally threatened luca with a shotgun because sheriff jones is a real one he's the closest thing that stella has to a father figure um ever since she moved to town with her mom she had a single mom and Sheriff Jones, even though he is gay and does get a love interest. It's very short. Um, he, he falls in love with the, the man at the pizza shop. Not relevant. I just want to point it out because it's really cute. <laughs> but um, he is the closest thing that Stella has to a father figure. And so he said, hmm, hmm it's my time. I'm going to threaten this man that I've also known most of his life. <laughs> but it's cute. But so it, it's a huge, massive deal that they're dating everyone is invested in this relationship now so what happens when they're done you know and stella asks stella asks luca so what happens in the after what happens when um ellen st james is gone and whether they win or lose what happens to their reputation and luca shrugs it off he's like well just continue and we'll act like best friends like we've always act and if people ask us about it we'll just say it didn't work out and we're better off as friends and this shit pissed me off and not because like the town has this over obnoxious like investment in the relationship because i kind of think that's actually very charming but like luca doesn't live in town he lives in new york he doesn't have to deal with the social repercussions, you know? He doesn't have to deal with the dozens of people asking, hey, what happened? What went wrong? Are you okay? So what's going on with you two? What happened with you two? The way that Stella would, because she still lives in town. She's still a part of that community. She sees people regularly. That's why they care, because they care about our girl. And I guess Luca too. And so it really rubbed me the wrong way that when she said, okay, but now everyone thinks we're dating what happens when we're not fake dating anymore and he goes eh the fuck you mean eh and even if even if they were both like a hundred percent on the fake part of the fake dating it's still rude <laughs> because it would all fall on her everyone is gonna ask her oh but you guys were so perfect together what happened and that's just annoying it's just causing problems for her and her reputation in town. Not to say that people are going to think that she's easy or what have you, but just in general. It causes much more, much more issues for her than it does for him. And so the fact that he's so nonchalant about it pisses me off. And so seeing him be this nonchalant with her being head over heels in love with him made me really not like him and i still was not convinced that he was meant to be the love interest we're on chapter six and i was not convinced at all i was like no no no. the twist is still coming it's still coming don't worry beckett's gonna save us and so i love i love stella it's hard not to love her you root for her from the beginning like she is the perfect hallmark christmas main character she feels like she could be your friend and so that's why this upsets me 
so much because everything inside me is saying girl you deserve better girl and i remember thinking about it i was like okay well if he is supposed to be the love interest okay then they don't break up and then they just kind of stumble into this really comfortable relationship and i'm like i don't like that either i want my girl to have romance she deserves fireworks where's the candlelight where's the pizzazz not here and my girl deserves pizzazz with her silly little romantic hallmark heart she deserves it and i i really only accepted luke as a love interest when i looked at the main when i looked at the cover and i realized that there was a pine tree like the little air freshener pine trees because that's something that he does every time he goes and visits her he like hides pine trees around her house and her office at work um for her to find after he's gone which is very sweet and not something that friends do to this extent i'm sure there are friends who do do this platonically and that this is something that i would do to my friend but i would do it once maybe twice because it's kind of funny once you do it like the fifth time then it's like i want you to think of me when i'm gone and that's not strictly platonic but stella is a lonely being and doesn't want to accept that it's like a romantic gesture she doesn't want to look into it too far past oh it's luca being silly but speaking of stella being lonely and the perfect hallmark main character um she doesn't have a family not really luca luca's family loves her and accepts her as part of the family and wants her around but she she doesn't feel comfortable being very close and spending the holidays with them and then dane sheriff jones loves her like a daughter but she's not going to go around to his house for thanksgiving even though i'm sure that he would have her in a heartbeat so what she does do for thanksgiving is a week early she goes to her dad's house so she's a bastard um her dad cheated on his wife with her mom had her that's why he wasn't itchy that's why he's not in the picture she found out as an adult after her mom died and you know she tried to reach out blah 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 blah. um but he's ashamed and doesn't let her come to actual thanksgiving and they do like a a fake thanksgiving like the week beforehand so we hate her dad we do like the rest of the family like l is the wife and l is actually the one who extended the invitation to stella um charlie is stella's brother and they're very good friends we see charlie and luca actually hanging out by themselves later on um very cute what i would want in a bonus chapter is a thanksgiving chapter where luca and stella are officially dating um and it's just l and charlie and they have like an actual thanksgiving on thanksgiving I think that would be very sweet. Um, the bonus chapter we got was just another sex scene. So back on a farm with our girl and things are going wrong as they head into the busy season. So Stella, wa- so Stella wakes up to learn that the barn door on what they call the Santa barn is actually getting jammed and causing issues. And so because it won't close all the way, um, it seems like raccoons are starting to make a nest in there um, and while she's in there kind of in a panic she hears wrestling she panics and she ends up locking herself in the santa barn and this is where luca gets to play hero he comes he shows up to help her does he fix the santa barn door does he catch the raccoons no but you know what they do do they practice making out so when evelyn st james comes in they're not like shocked (laughs) It, it feels more well rehearsed which is actually like that's actually fair it's actually a good idea um but it sends our girl to a titty and then after that he goes back to new york which i thought i thought he was going to go back to new york and he pro- he makes a point to promise that he's going to be back in time for evelyn st james so i thought he was not going to make it back in time for evelyn st james he does I was so fucking sure he wasn't gonna make it and again i still i like him as her friend i love their dynamic as best friends it's very cute it's very sweet i didn't think it was good enough for a girl yet so but while he's gone in new york luca's mom gets involved and i love luca's mom again the character work in this book is really good they're all very endearing it's not perfect but it's endearing and it makes them feel real but I love Luca's mom, and she comes over to interrogate our girl. But at least she comes with food because our girl is still starving. 
because she can't pay herself because the farm's failing don't forget um and in in this visit stella learns more about luca's dad and luca never talks about his dad um so that's really sweet and later on in the book she does get him to talk about his dad more which is sweet i guess um and also luca's mom i can't remember her name and i'm not gonna look it up uh she invites stella over for thanksgiving you are part of the family you are dating you are coming to thanksgiving you're not allowed to say no and of course, Stella says, yes, one, she doesn't have a choice, um, but two, she gets free tiramisu. I would also say yes for free tiramisu, I'm not gonna lie to you. But this stressed me out because Stella, once again, rightfully asks, okay, what are we gonna tell your family when we're not dating anymore? I'm coming to the family Thanksgiving. What are we going to tell them? And again, he goes, eh, I want to strangle this man. <laughs> I won't strangle this man. And it, it makes Stella angry and it makes me angry. And it's, this isn't a conversation I want to be having. I have enough on my plate right now without Luca's laissez-faire attitude towards the most important relationship in my life. It's like he doesn't even care what happens after all of this. Doesn't care what people thinks of us. Thinks of me. Angry and a little hurt, I pick up my pace on the sidewalk and blink at the frustrated tears burning at the corners of my eyes. I've always been an angry crier no matter how hard I try to stop myself. And it only makes me more upset as I trudge along the sidewalk. I know this whole thing was my idea and the consequences of my actions, but Luca isn't, he's not taking the fallout seriously. Page 79. I know it's because he loves her and he doesn't want to think about an after their relationship because he doesn't want there to be an after of their relationship. But that doesn't make this any less frustrating because again, they're best friends. And he's not dumb. Like, you would think that he would at least put up the facade about caring about her reputation in town, you know? And again, I don't mean, like, oh, you're a slut type reputation. I mean, just her reputation in general. People are much less kind to women in relationships than men. And so, even if they were actually dating and it didn't work out, who's the blame gonna fall on? Am I projecting... Maybe. And again, I know it's because to him, he doesn't want there to be an after because he loves her so much, but still, we're not there yet, so I'm allowed to be mad still. Also, I just want to say, Luca's mom has gray eyes and a fucking skunk stripe. That's what I want to be when I grow up. I don't have gray eyes, I have brown eyes, but a skunk stripe? Queen. God, I want gray hair. But with Luca's mom filling up Stella's fridge to the brim with homemade Italian food and homemade Italian desserts, we get a flashback of Luca doing something similar. Every time he comes to visit her at the farm, he comes and he, he buys her groceries, he makes sure her fridge is full before he leaves, and he cooks her food and he cooks her dessert to make sure she always has food when he's not there. Again, that's very sweet. That's so sweet. I want to like him. I want to root for him. And it, it, I want tiramisu. I think their relationship is so fun. I love hearing them talk with one another. I like seeing them be all flirty and be in a relationship. It's fun. I just wish the setup was a little bit different. But it is cute. I will say, like, the, there are a lot of very sweet moments between the two of them. They're endearing. Luca, Luca's, like, endearing in his own way. He, he's very much golden retriever energy. Very much golden retriever energy. And then the next morning, he shows up at her house. Like, she wakes up 7 in the morning. He is cooking her breakfast, making her coffee. And they snuggle, and it's really cute, and she um, invites him into bed because that's normal for them. They've shared beds before, and they snuggle, and they have this moment of intimacy. Like, this domestic intimacy is precious. And then they wake up and start dry humping, and it's, ki it's kind of very spicy, actually. Like, there's something really fun about the, oh, we shouldn't be doing this type attitude that goes on, and it's it's fun. It's it's not like habanero spicy but it's like a jalapeno it's like oh there's a little kick here it's a little something that's fun nice i liked it i really liked it. i feel nothing but a happy lightness fizzing in my chest popping like champagne every time i feel the flutter of his eyelashes against my skin page 89 like come on <laughs> that's so cute like ah, ah and even though i love beckett i was 
a little disappointed that he shows up to interrupt the moment, but he does show up bringing kittens. Didn't mention it, wasn't super important. The raccoons that were in the Santa shed were actually a bunch of kittens that have now been adopted by Beckett. Um, their names are, their names are Prancer, Prancer, Comet, Cupid, and Vixen, and they're precious, and I love them, and Beckett carries them around in his pockets. And so after this little, like, dry humping spell, Luca proposes that maybe they could, like, pretend to be boyfriend and girlfriend even when there aren't people around. Just to, you know, give it, give it a try. Please? And now that I'm saying it out loud, it does very much sound like he's only asking so they can have sex. Um, that's not the context in the book. In the, in the book, it is, like, very sweet because neither of them, even going into this, being like, okay, maybe we can do, like, a trial relationship, both of them, they don't have sex for a while because they're so self-conscious about making sure they're not forcing the other person to have sex, which is good tension, in my opinion. It's good tension and it speaks to their character and it makes them, it endears them to us, the reader, more. So I really actually liked that, that they didn't have sex right away. It's very clumsy, it's very sweet. And I would be lying if I said I didn't assume that the reason why he went back to New York was to break up with a girl that he might casually be seeing because he realized that he had feelings for Violet. Um, Violet? <laughs> Violet! <laughs> feelings for Stella, but it's never mentioned, and there's nothing else that hints to it. I'm pretty sure he just went back to New York to get some distance, to get like a breather, because he was getting too hot and heavy with Stella just being hot and being around so he's like I gotta I gotta take a cold shower um I think that's the reason um but in my head there's another girl that he had to go dramatically leave in New York and come back to Inglewood and, and this is the point in the story where it, they start to grow on me I start to root for them finally I know it took forever but we're here and what really pushed me over the edge was he gets a job in Delaware. He asks Stella her opinion. It's like, yeah, there's a job 20 minutes away. It'd be a little bit different to what I'm doing right now. And it's, you know, it's a good new opportunity. They've been trying to get me for a while. And I finally said, yes. She's fucking over the moon excited. She is so happy. And she doesn't fully realize he's doing it for her. And this is the first time where that, that big hint that he's doing this for her, that like, um... What is it when the audience real realize something that the character doesn't, the uh, perspective, irony, something like that? Very, very prominent here. But it, it's really cute. It's really clear to the audience why he's doing it. And it's really sweet. It's very sweet. He just wants to be closer to her and they could spend the day together. They're 20 minutes away. I live 40 minutes from my partner. And I still see him every single day. So like 20 minutes, that's a fucking dream. That's a dream. And then they go, they do Thanksgiving with Luca's family. She sees all the aunts. They all accept her. Um, they literally accept her as family. They make her peel potatoes. No, 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 you're part of the conveyor belt. You're part of the assembly line. Get your ass in the kitchen. You're family now. And I love that shit. And like at this dinner, Stella learns that, Stella learns from Luca's mom that the kids at the local high school are passing around a sign-up sheet because they know about Evelyn and St. James competition. So they're passing around a sign-up sheet. So everyone has a different time block of when they're going to be at the farm. When Evelyn is there, that way the farm looks busy. Like, <laughs> this is what makes me really love this book. This is, like, the, these little moments where it saved the book for me. Like, this, this community that is built. It's so sweet. And when she does show up, yeah, it's, it's bustling. There's always someone in the ice rink. There's always people in the Santa shed. There's always people walking around looking at trees just so it looks, just so the town can rally behind Stella, try to help her win this competition. Like, come on. Come on. That's what Christmas is about, my dude. That's the hallmark shit right there. <laughs> um, and also, this is, it comes up like a little bit later, but I'll just say it now. Um, in the Santa shed, they actually don't have a Santa. <laughs> um it is where the kids come to tell to tell you know what they want for christmas but what it is is a bunch of um local firemen volunteers who have they're in their red suit and they have a big badge that says official north pole representative 
um, and they have like a couple of them in there and they write their little notes and they give it to the kid and the kid goes puts it in the mailbox and they're like all right we're gonna make sure Santa gets it that's so that's so stinking cute my dude which also the reasoning why they did it is because apparently Santas are really expensive to rent this time of year which which I, I love that I love that reasoning it made me laugh so not only do they have the North Pole representatives but also they have a little thing where the kids put their letters in the notes the official notes they put them in and at the end of the week or the end of the day I can't remember um Stella and Beckett and Layla go through and they distribute it to the the kids adults whether it be their parents their grandparents what have you that way they have a list and it's just it's a cute it's cute it's really stinking cute it's really cute I really like this tree. I like the Christmas tree farm a lot so circling back to where we are in the story our girl finally she finally gets laid good for her and the transitions from besties to lovers is really seamless it goes really well and it is sliding in to a comfortable relationship that I was like worried about but it's still cute but like I'm not gonna lie it's still cute as hell I know they've finally slept together the spice is only okay <laughs> it's only okay I, I think okay I have to be quiet again I think I liked the dry humping scene better only because it's because Estella is just so in love with him that the language can get kind of like syrupy you know what I mean like a little over the top which is cute like don't get me wrong it's cute it makes it fun um I just liked the dry humping scene a little bit more I like the tension there a little bit more which makes sense the scene isn't supposed to have tension it's supposed to be the tension releasing but again she's a little too much in love but I'll, I'll let it pass I'll let it pass it is good it is fun but unfortunately not everyone is in the holiday spirit because the farm gets broken into and so that same night you know they're there they're cuddling at like three in the morning her phone go i don't need to whisper anymore um her phone goes off because one of the camera detects motion and they see the camera being pulled down and since luca is there he's able to jump into action to be the hero luca and beckett both go and stella goes too but she gets yelled at by multiple people to go back inside they go out to try to find who the culprit is and stella's starting to put the pieces together maybe they're not just having a bad luck spell maybe there is something really wrong here maybe someone is trying to maybe someone really is out to get the farm but they yell at stella she goes back she calls dane sheriff jones um and he picks up on the first ring because that's his daughter and you can't tell me different that's his daughter and she absolutely has like an emergency bypass on his phone so if she calls the sound goes off like there's no way he's missing it he picks up immediately and he is there in uniform in like 10 minutes it's so sweet it's so sweet unfortunately they don't catch who broke the camera but they do catch luca and beckett fighting in a mud pit which for a fraction of a, a fraction of a moment i was like oh my boy my boy he's here he's fighting for her honor he's gonna swoop it no no they went running and they tripped and they fell into one another and like little boys do they just start shoving one another i say little boys any any man would do this i think any straight man um they ran into each other, they fell into the mud, and they started, like, shoving back and forth, which is just really funny, because they both come just covered back in mud. Like, what happened? I fell. He pushed me, so I pushed him back. It's, it's just cute. It's a very cute scene. And this is where we see Luca get jealous. He gets jealous, because Stella is still in her house, and she's waiting with Caleb, who is um, one of the deputy sheriffs. Um, and they're sitting, they're talking, they're laughing. They've known each other forever. They went to school together. And Luca comes in and he's like, another man making my girl laugh? What the fuck? And I'm bringing this up because Luca being jealous, boy, you got no leg to stand on. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. It's so silly and it made me laugh. Um, but also, I really love Caleb. He has a crush on Layla and he's like in love with her baked goods and it's very, very sweet. To him, Layla's just a little slice of heaven and I can't disagree. They continue. Luca's jealous. 
whatever. Evelyn's coming the next day, it doesn't matter. They just need to make it through this visit. We can't focus on Luca being jealous. We can't focus on people breaking in. Evelyn is here, oh no. And so far, so good. The you know, first day of her being here, she has like a tour of the premise, like an unofficial tour of the premises. She's wowed by the place. It feels like magic. Layla's cooking is divine. She's having a great time. And so Evelyn and Stella are hanging out in the bakehouse and they're talking, you know, getting to know one another when big ol' handsome Beckett walks in and Evelyn fucking bolts. And now it's like, oh god, okay, so everything's going wrong. Awesome. Turns out Beckett, he went to like a fertilizer convention. This man loves trees and fertilizers more than he loves people and I love that for him. But he went to the fertilizer convention and, and at that convention he met someone who stayed in the same B&B &B that he was staying in and they hit it off and they had sex. Good for her. <laughs> but it, it turns out that the next morning she was gone and so he said okay no big deal whatever um, and he came home and both Stella and Layla are scandalized that he did not tell them this. Not because like he's supposed to know who Evelyn is. Like no, he doesn't. He, he's not a social media girly. Um, not because of that, but because like, hello, the drama. Beckett, you had gossip this entire time and you didn't share with us? I thought we were your friends. Beckett, how dare you? And honestly, that's the same reaction I would have. If one of my friends had like a whirlwind one night stand at a fertilizer convention and all I heard about was fertilizer, oh, I'd be pissed. Girl, that's hot gossip. But the stress is becoming a little bit too much for Stella. With people breaking in, with everything going wrong, with Evelyn bolting out of their meeting, um, the stress becomes a little bit too much. And in the air of revealing things to one another, Stella finally reveals to Layla and Beckett how badly their finances are doing for the farm. Something she has kept close to her chest for months now. I don't know when I lost my mic. I really hope that's gonna be fine. We'll see. Puppies! You're just gonna have to ignore the dogs. I don't know what to tell you. But, um... So, in the air of revealing things, Stella, you know, the stress is too much, she tells them, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so Layla and Beckett are scandalized. Not because they're in the red, but because Stella kept it from them. And Layla is like, I don't, I don't understand, like, our paychecks have never been late, they've never been short, what do you mean we're having money issues? I thought we were still okay. And... Stella reveals that she hasn't paid herself in months. You know, she says, my house is on property. I, d I didn't need to be paid. All the while, we know um, our girl hasn't been eating. Great. In order to keep the lights on. And they're hurt. You know, Layla and Beckett are really hurt that she would do this. That you know, she wouldn't tell them they're supposed to be partners, they're supposed to be in this together. And so they kind of storm off, both of them. And I... I looked out of my notes. My notes end here. I'm gonna put this away. All right. And so some of these things might be a little bit out of order. The ending of this book is a complete whirlwind and it doesn't super stick the landing. Like, it does and it doesn't. It's just a little clumsy. Um, it's a good ending, but it's a little... A little clumsy. So Beckett and Layla storm off and Stella is like, I have to go <laughs> I have to go to sleep. I don't know what to do now. And Stella has this big thing, naturally, about security. She doesn't she doesn't think that they're coming back, essentially. Um, because people leave. Nothing is permanent. You know, growing up moving from place to place, having people in and out of your life will do that to someone. So she is stressed, she's sad, and and she's convinced Evelyn is not coming back whatsoever. She doesn't super know what to do, but she keeps moving forward the way you have to. And so the next morning, Evelyn does show back up, apologizes, and she's like, I, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to seem unprofessional. I was just taken aback. And it just caught me by surprise, but I am a professional. I am here and we're going to finish this because they, they have made like 
fast friend. They get along really, really well. So she came and apologized. And um, Stella was like, Beckett told me if if you need him to be scarce, he'll get the fuck out of here um, to make you more comfortable. We don't want to make you uncomfortable. And she's like, no, there's no need. Beckett came and talked to me. There's no need. We're good. We're just going to keep going. And Stella's like, thank God, we're going to keep going. And so Luca comes in, you know, he kisses our girl, he kisses her good morning. It's very, their, them being in a relationship is very sweet. Again, not enough pizzazz for me, but we'll get there. He comes in, he kisses our girl. And it, it's, the one thing I will say, when they got in to like the trial period for their week, I will say it was like a floodgate unleashed. And he suddenly felt much more confident in being like lovey-dovey and my head is being cut off. I fixed the framing, yay! And he's suddenly much more confident in being lovey-dovey and being in an actual relationship and being very sweet with Stella. And it, it works for me, personally. But he comes in and he is like, hey babe, I'm here, what do you need? He's the one who actually gives Evelyn like the official tour of the farm, which I thought was sweet because they are supposed to like be running it together and he knows it just as well as Stella does. So he, he's the one who gives her the official tour because guess who comes back? Beckett and Layla. They come in with a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> While Luca's doing the tour with Evelyn, Beckett and Layla are telling Stella, hey girl, we can't do this anymore. You can't keep things from us. We are meant to be a team. We will be a team. And they actually put forth an offer to buy out one third of the farm. So that way all three of them are official owners. So all three of them shoulder the financial responsibility. Um, not only that, but they both offer to take pay cuts. So that way they can keep running the farm while still paying their people. I really like this. I thought it was very sweet. There's no way to like gradually do this solution. They just come in with a PowerPoint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is fine. Which is totally fine. And Luca helps with this too. He He's a data analysis person and he helped Stella the night before. Didn't talk about it. Not super relevant, but he does, he does look over the spreadsheets and everything. He does help. But something that Luca brought up earlier that Beckett and Layla are bringing up now, um, why don't we charge admission? for the farm and Stella's like no I don't want to do that I've thought about it I've run the numbers multiple times and yes it would help a lot financially but then kids like me wouldn't be able to come to the farm and experience the Christmas magic the way I did and that's not fair anyone over the age of 21 is charged admission everyone underneath can still come in free I think it's a really good compromise and then of course the admission is not super high it's just enough to help them through financial trouble, um, which I really liked. I really liked that she like fought everyone and was like, no, I don't want to charge admission. That's the one thing I don't want to do. Um, and her reasoning why it's been set up throughout the book. It's, it's just very sweet. It's very sweet. And you're, and you're really rooting for her. Like, yeah, girl, keep your farm, keep your farm free. Stella goes with Luca and Evelyn and finishes out the official tour and it goes swimmingly. You know, she comes out with two with two things of hot chocolate like mom let's go for a walk you and me and then it starts snowing and it's like ooh, it was good it's magic it's like they're in a little snow globe it's very sweet and Evelyn's like go fuck yourself this is too cute to be real um which i agree and then that night the luca meltdown happens so evelyn leaves you know she's gonna come back the next day one, one last day and Luca and Stella, they're talking about the day, they're talking about everything, and Luca asks, okay, so next week, can we, um, will you help me move in? Like, you can move in with me. And Stella's like, what the fuck are you talking about next week? We only talked about this week. And he's like, well, I thought this was going well. I thought we could just keep going we don't need to have an after we can just keep going stella is like but you don't love me and he's like yes i do and she's like you can't you can't love me you're insane why would you say that to me because she loves him so much that she's finding it hard to believe that he loves her just the same um and for a moment this was really infuriating to me i was like this is just artificial conflict blah 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 but then i thought about it and i was like no this is genuine there's like a genuine trauma response. She's genuinely jerking back because she's like, I don't, I don't deserve love. 
people leave. You're saying you want to stay. That can't be true because people leave. That's my reality. Um, and I think it's done really well. And he does end up storming out. He does end up storming out. And they break up. And this is when Stella, to calm down, goes for a walk around the farm. She has a good angry cry. Me too, girl. I get it. And, and she ends up running into Evelyn, who is still out in the farm, still having a good time. And because they are friends, she asks, like, hey, what's wrong? You look upset. And Stella comes clean. I've been lying to you this entire time. Luke and I are not together. Um, this isn't our farm. This is just my farm. I, I just, I'm in such a bind. I didn't know what to do. I just really wanted a chance to win. And I know you like romance. And, and she's just letting it all spill out. And Evelyn is like, girl, I know. She finds out because someone in town says something like someone in town is like really sad that they're finally together and she kind of puts together it's like oh well what do you mean finally if they're supposed to be together this entire time you know what i mean so she puts it together at the bnb and she's like i know i i've known this entire time i'm really glad you're the one to tell me but i've kind of known this entire time and unfortunately that means that they're disqualified from the competition not because you have to have a boyfriend in the competition but because in signing up um you legally agree that everything you're putting on your application is true and it wasn't she lied so that means that she's legally disqualified which i guess that's a that's a fun way to disqualify her you know what i mean that that's a valid way to disqualify her in like the narrative sense i thought they were just gonna lose <laughs> um and she's like sorry like i'm so sorry i have to disqualify you i'm still gonna I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna put the post out like normal. But yeah, no, you can't win. And so I was like, you know what? Good enough for me. Like, I just feel better to have come clean to have been lying to you. So thank you. And again, they're friends. Their dynamic is cute. And she goes back, you know, she feels a little bit better. She goes back home and who's on her stoop but Luca, who is there to be like, I'm so sorry I walked out. I know, I know you have this thing about being abandoned and about people leaving so I couldn't leave I had to stay um and the second he walked out he felt bad and came back but she was already gone so he's just been sitting out there in the snow waiting for her which is cute I guess <laughs> they make up they kiss it's sweet they're officially together they have sex and that's oh that's not the end of the book I'm so that's the end no um Dane gives our girl a call and she's like hey we found the guy like oh my god you found the guy so they go and find out who the guy is and it's mr hewitt the librarian <laughs> and if you're saying who the hell is that that was my reaction too um he only shows up once in the story where he's glaring at them from the stoop of the library which it's like not really a glare like i i assumed it was like <gasps> shock disbelief they're dating <gasps> but no it's supposed to be like a glare like he doesn't like stella Okay, um, Stella goes down to the police department. She's like, what, what the fuck? Why is the librarian the guy who's, who's sabotaging my Christmas tree farm? Um, so apparently what had happened was Mr. Hewitt and the former owner had a gentleman's agreement that when the former owner wanted to sell, he would sell it to Hewitt. Hewitt didn't have all the money at the time and in came Stella sauntering in with all the money. And so he sold it because like why wouldn't you and so he sold it and so Hewitt took that as a personal offense and was trying to get her to go out of business because she bought the Christmas tree farm not knowing that he wanted it first now this sounds insane but it's actually quite believable like I think the reasoning here is good for the most part he felt entitled to the land because he wanted to open an alpaca farm personal alpaca farm he wanted the land and it was meant to be his so he's mad about it so he's trying to buy it under value and so he's the one that canceled their shipments he's the one that unplugged layla's fridge he's the one that uh jammed the santa door and he's the one that killed all of the south the south plot all the trees are dead and he's the one that killed all the trees on the south plot so he's been doing like a lot to get this farm to go under but by christmas magic it stays open um 
and Layla looks at him and she's like the irony of this is if you had just told me I would I would have given you a space for your alpacas Mr. Hewitt you just needed to talk to me which is so valid because that and she thinks about she's like it would have been really cute we would have found a way to have like a petting zoo we would have you know when they're shorn once a year we could have made yarn from the alpaca wool and sold it um and sold it in the office like we we could have been good company like this would ugh. a christmas tree farm with alpacas sounds dope <laughs> she's like I, i'm sorry mr hewitt I'm, i just didn't know not my fault <laughs> and it's not it's not her fault she doesn't end up pressing charges what she does instead because she, she, she feels bad because he's an older guy and she understands where he's coming from and now that she knows that it's just him it's you know it feels like there's a weight off her chest it's not the universe out to get her it was one guy who just caused a lot of ruckus and that guy won't do it again <laughs> um and so she feels better and in the, in the spirit of christmas she doesn't press charges but she does have him pay back for damages which totally valid so with the money being paid back for damages um and then the traction that they got online from evelyn even though they didn't win the competition they still got featured um with those two things combined plus their new finance plan the christmas tree farm is saved <laughs> um and it's sweet and they finally breath of fresh air things are gonna be okay and our girl got a boyfriend which is it's, it's so sweet it's very fun there's an epilogue where it's the two of them they're in her little they're in her little cottage and he's getting really nervous he's like yeah no it's you know the sun the sun is setting let's go for a walk and she's like why do you want to go for a walk we can go get a tree tomorrow it's cold and he's like no i, I want to go get a tree right now right now and he's trying to get her to go for this walk to go pick out a tree and she looked at him and he goes are you proposing and he's like shut up shut up shut up shut up shut up and it's precious like i love the epilogue more than any other scene because this is where a girl gets the fireworks he, he she gets the fireworks and the candlelight and i was like okay no this is a good ending we're good we're 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 solid picnic table with candles <sighs> don't have candles on a tree farm i think they're lady candles he set up all the food and he's gonna propose to her and it's very sweet and of course she says yes and that's the epilogue there is a bonus chapter in the copy that i have which is just one of the sex scenes from his point of view again i wish it was in a year thanksgiving um like a family thanksgiving with l charlie luca luca's family like that's what i wish it was but it was, it was just an extra sex scene which i kind of glossed over i didn't super read it again syrupy language of people being in love and having stuff I was like blah 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 boring but it's there and that's love light farms my friends i think it's really fun i think it's cute i think it's worth a read do i think it's fantastic no but it scratches the hallmark itch so i think i'm gonna stick with a solid three out of five trees but they're fluffy trees Anyway, have you read Love Light Farms? Did you like it? Were you Team Luca from the very beginning? Or were you like me, where you were like halfway through and like, man, I don't know if this guy is good enough for a girl. Let me know. Subscribe if you want more bookish content. I got a lot more things I want to talk about. I got more books I want to read. Maybe finally I will fulfill my dream. I'm so sorry. I'm hungry. It's almost dinner time. Um, maybe I will finally fulfill my dream of doing a book and cook one day. So thanks for hanging out with me and I hope this video either allowed you a bit of a break from your family during the holidays or maybe it's hyping you up to get ready to see your family for the holidays or maybe it just kept you in the festive mood while you're by yourself. Either way, no matter what it was, I'm so grateful that we hung out and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.